Hello, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Content Breaker, the first take of Cuphead. I am Static Dreads, who is not at all a cup. This is <laughs> Bow Before Zog, who is half cup, and strangely entertaining, is quarter cup. And <laughs> our fourth member, Kells, it's so full cup that he turned into a cuphead and became the animation, so that's why he's not here today. Ah, that's yes. why I look so mm. familiar. Interesting. Yes. And that's what we do out here on Content Breaker. Um, how are you gentlemen this fine, fine day of recording? Meh. <laughs> kind of like wow. the opinions I have on this show. <laughs> Just meh. Wow. We're really in out here. We're alive, y'all. We have <laughs> life and air and, you know, freedom in 2022 of March. So let's let's be some more than eh. Let's be at least. Don't tell a, me how meh. to be. I'll tell you how to be, and you'll like it, sir. I left my Digimon mm. cards in my car. I just realized that. So much anyway, freedom. yes, freedom is an illusion. Watch Attack on Titan. I'm just kidding. Um. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, today we are going to do some Cuphead, the Netflix show, which is not to be confused with the game that I didn't play, which I probably will not play because Cuphead. it's the game's hard. I heard that much. So I mean, the show was hard I mean, to watch. So. <laughs> it's pretty true I can't so you're telling me it's an accurate translation it's a it's a one to one I would say <laughs> um I don't believe you but alright <laughs> yeah um but no this is totally strange this topic he loves the Netflix shows this man is addicted to Netflix shows I don't love the Netflix shows it was just something new and it's something video game yeah. related so you know That's me different. I have to cover it and it's different so <laughs> It is different, and it is video game. I'm just, ironically, I thought you would be the one to recommend Arcane instead of you know Zog. So that was took me for just because surprise it was on Netflix. Because well. <laughs> on Netflix and it's a video game, it's all of Strange's criteria in one. So, and also, where is Dragon's Dogma, and where is the other game Netflix Maybe anime? We'll... You gotta, you gotta uh, do better in the Brad. trash where they belong. Look, I get one topic. Oh. Yeah, I say I get one topic every uh, every month. So, but you get three quarter. So there's three Netflix video game shows <laughs> that you could be doing. Uh, a quarter. Yes, a quarter <laughs> of a a quarter of a yeah. year. So, three remember, months. Yeah, do it by quarters. So, anyways. So just yes, the way today, that was worded was a little weird. <laughs> we are do we are talking about the Cuphead show. It was an American Canadian animated web television series. Created by Chad and Jared Moldenhauer for Netflix. And is produced mm. by the same studio that made the game, Studio MDHR. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Because if you don't know about the Cuphead game, which is um, it has a certain uh, a look to it. Looks like a 1930s cartoon. And it is actually very well done because, uh, fun fact about that, they actually animated every single frame of that game. Hmm. By hand, hmm. is it was a it was a indie game nice. that came out in 2017. And even if you don't have to play it, just go look at trailers uh. or some gameplay of it. V- looks so good, like they they put a lot of effort into it. Um, the show kind of falls a little flat, I'd say, in the animation department, but we'll definitely talk about uh. that a little bit. From what I've seen of yeah. the game, the show looks like the the game. It, the animation basically looks the same. Uh, the only thing that falls flat to me is the writing. Yeah. Yeah, I, w- I would agree. Um, the writing didn't really like the characters. They felt like they were just interchangeable with any other, like, you know, it felt like a Rick and Morty type situation, honestly. It's just like, what are we doing, you know? Very episodic, very much a, yeah. this is the uh, business of this episode, so this is what's the trend we're going to follow and what's going to happen. Quick but, uh, tangent. Yeah. What do you all think the best episodic show is? I have one that comes to mind. Mm. Episodic cartoon, that is. You were talking about just current or ever? Just like ever in like general like with no I already know your thing. answer static I already know what's your... my answer I'll, I'll let you tell it or you just it's not to say static it. shock 
No, Why? Ladybug, Cat Noir. It's episodic. Mm. I don't think that's the best. I think that finale <laughs> for season four was crazy. But, um, <laughs> you know, watch it at your own discretion. I'm going to say the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Like, I feel like that was one of the top episodic shows, like, of my life. Like, it was just so, like, I was enthralled. You know, it was, I don't think we ever had an overarching theme, like, ever. Except, like, the specials. But, like, you know, I feel like that was pretty solid. Then second, I would give it to Kim Possible. Mm. Honestly, I don't know. It Episodic shows are very much a... You get what you... You get what you get. Get the fuck over it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm wondering, do you think that y'all's enjoyment of the show was taken away because it is episodic? No. I feel like definitely. I, um, honestly, I like Power Rangers. I like uh, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. I like Codename yeah. Kids Next Door. I like a lot of episodic shows. But those shows so, felt like they had an overall theme, personally. Like, don't get me wrong. I well, I love... The theme of this show is just, like, the games. It's just that Cuphead 1920s, 30s aesthetic. Yeah, but I mean, like, okay. So, K- Codename Kids Next Door, we had the... You know, I mean, I guess we got Satan or the devil in Cuphead, whatever his name is. The devil. Um, the devil, yeah. But, you know, it didn't feel like the weight of, like, Father or the life of children from down the lane or, like, you know, the, like, Toilet yeah. Man. But, <laughs> and, you know, like, we had Nurgle. Like, it just, like, it felt like this was episodic, but it shouldn't have been. I feel like Cuphead should have been, like, an adventure, like... It should have been like a Shira type thing. Not in the same vein as Shira, but it should have been like there should have been an overarching journey, you know, like it would have been cool if like, you know, the devil was I mean, the villain that stayed back and then come into the picture. I mean, it'd you know, be like, really cool if stuff. we got like an owl house kind of thing where it's just yeah. a whole new world kind of thing. But yeah, that's not what they presented. That's not at all what they were even going for with this. And that was pretty clear just by the opening. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, uh, that's what I'm I, saying. So, like, but I'm saying that's not what they were going for. I'm saying it would have been more enjoyable if that's what they went for for me personally. So probably, I wholeheartedly agree. I was kind of like, while I like the animation, um, the whole way through, like the animation looks good. There are a couple of grievances with it though that I noticed. Yeah. I'm like, ah, y'all kind of cut corners there. But yeah. other than that, the plot of the game. It's a game plot, but the whole point of it was, and maybe maybe they're trying to stick to more of the 1930s, like, oh, la-di-da, you know, dancing yeah. flowers. And Weird. It the, was literally just, oh, hey, look at these drawings moving. Yeah. The draw was just, animation can exist. <laughs> and the, it can be beautiful. But to go back to before I uh, flew off the rails, not flew off the rails, but you know what I mean? Yeah, you just went uh, right off the rails. Yeah, I just went like, I lost my train of thought. Uh, and the plot it. of the game was that Cuphead and Bugman, they kind of, they do something basically, they went to, I, I'm trying to remember, I, sh- I should have looked it up, but basically <laughs> the devil catches them, they're like, okay, y'all owe me your soul, but then he's like, but if y'all go and take these other souls for me, I'm not going to take your soul, basically. So that's how like um, the plot of the game goes, and then that's why it's okay. a bunch of boss rushes yeah. that they have to go fight. And a couple of characters in the show show up uh, from the game, like uh, the vegetable trio with the onion and the carrot mm. um, and the potato. They're, they're all in the game, and the Frog Brothers. Uh, but basically, you go fight them, beat them up, so that the devil can take their souls, not just Cuphead's soul. So did you play the game? No, it's very hard. I would never touch it with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but I like watching other people play it. It's, uh, Didn't you tell me you wanted to play Elder Ring like literally two days ago? Oh, it's yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's very much. It's a very I'm fun game. Sure Elder Ring is Expect to get your ass Cuphead. kicked. Yeah. Well, like, oh, I'm sure, it, I'm sure Elder Ring is harder. Yeah. But uh, like something like Elder Ring or Dark Souls or whatnot, it's an RPG style game. So. Sometimes you're just ill-equipped to deal with the things that come your way because you're just like life, man. Just yeah, like life. But with Cuphead, Cuphead more, is, from what I understand, more, Cuphead's more like a platformer, sur- mixed with like a survival kind of thing. You just got to keep jumping so, and missing everything that keeps flying at you. 
it's pretty that much. Mega Man Game Boy game. What was it Mega Man X that was like hard as ball cracks for Probably. no reason? Yeah, uh, it's like no pretty much. No, he's kind of right. Go through, uh, do platform part, and then you get to the boss battle, which you can kind of redo and redo. Mm-hmm. But it takes man. a lot of dodging and like parrying and you know skill and that kind of thing. I'm like hey. Sonic Rush all yeah. over again. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I can enjoy playing Dark Souls just because of all I love playing RPGs and the customization yeah. and everything. Yeah. Uh, but Cuphead, I am garbage with platformers. I do not find them fun. I do not enjoy any amount of time I really play with them uh, unless I just fall in love with the aesthetic of it. And even See, then, so- that's just a surface level thing. One so of my favorite. Yeah, not my not my cup of tea. Why don't I go ahead, Strange? I was going to say, would your opinion change if I told you that this was generally geared towards a younger audience? No. <laughs> what? All right. That's a, that's <laughs> like, I mean, what? Like, I don't. I mean, this um, show is clearly geared toward a younger audience. Yeah. So but, um, I'm wondering if that's why they couldn't no, do the stop, whole. Uh, stop. Stop. Okay. My point is what we were talking about before we go super far away from it. So, in terms of platforms, I got to say, like, it's like plat. It's not that it was a platformer that turned me off because one of my favorite games of all time is Sonic the Hedgehog series, which most of them are platformers. Besides, all the good ones are platformers. I can safely say that. So, <laughs> um, but Cuphead just kind of had like it wasn't the aesthetic because I was like kind of hyped, but it gave me like weird flashbacks to this old cartoon called um, Flapjack, which kind of scarred me a little bit. So, <laughs> The Adventures of Flapjack and Peppermint Larry. Wait, no. Peppermint Larry? Knuckles. Anyway, I don't know. Like, You mean the weird-ass fucking uh, sometimes uh, real-life, sometimes cartoon kind of thing where they lived in a whale? Yes. Yep. Bubby. Bubby was the whale's name. <laughs> I fail to see the connection between these two, honestly. The art, I am, it's really the art style. Like, Yeah, I cannot see the... I can't see it. <laughs> Go back and look it up, and then you'll be like, oh. I, I can sort of see it, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, well, it looks good more thing like... you all aren't static, so you don't have to see how <laughs> static sees. So, but yeah, no, now strange, you can take your point that deter from what I was saying. Now no, you're allowed wondering, to talk. I know. Yes. Uh, no, I was wondering. In your free country that you live in, there's a lot less violence than in the game I'm going to do air quotes because it's not the game's not even that violent you I mean the the bosses when you beat them they just start like have little poofs all over them they're like Aah! you know so it's not even that violent but i'm wondering if that's like oh we can't really we could talk about soul stealing and the telephone can get his soul stolen soul stolen it's but, okay to see someone literally in their soul ripped out of them yeah but you know we can't actually show them shooting little finger lasers out of their out of their fingers that's that's too much it's too it would much. be too much in this world that we live in. So, uh, <laughs> okay. But this, um, this whole production actually has a very unique voice cast. So, uh, I, you know, true Valentino. I don't know who that is, but Oops. Frank Torado, Mugman, who voices Mugman, voices Starscream uh, since Combiner Wars, and he's yeah. been in a ton of anime dubs like Demon Slayer and uh, everything. Don't watch dubs anymore. So, uh, one of my favorite voice actors, um, that I just only discovered voice actors. I'm like, that voice sounds real familiar. Gray Griffin, who voices Miss Chalice, which shows up in the last Gray episode. Gray Griffin is amazing. She, what else did they I voice? love her. She voices Azula. Daphne and Azula. I forgot about that. She's Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Azula. She's also a um, lady, um, uh, De Winter in Vox Machina. Okay. And, yeah. Mandy from Billy and Mandy. And Mandy. Oh. Yeah, I forgot. Mm-hmm. She and was in Invincible too, wasn't she? Yes. Monster Girl. Yeah. And a few other voices. And also she voiced Queen Moon from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. All right. I rock with it. She's all over the place. Wait, and she makes amazing. a couple of appearances. Um Wayne and Brady is in this, which blew my mind. Yeah, I know. I was like, what? No, he plays King Dice. As he should. Um and if you don't know who Wayne Brady is, I'm sorry. Which I'm surprised, like, they didn't use King Dice as much as they did in the game, which King Dice is like the kind of the right-hand man of the devil, but they kind of gave him a henchman guy 
she's okay. Uh, I was like, okay, that's weird. He would just show up for one episode. Maybe he'll come back. I'm not sure. But what do you guys think about, um, I know we talked about this a little bit already, but what do you guys think about the, the animation itself? Like the 3D rotoscoping, the homage to old like Disney era. Steamboat Betty Willie Boop. type stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, it fits I that think aesthetic. It was fine. Yeah, it fits that it aesthetic fine. perfectly. Yeah. Uh, the blend of 3D and 2D works so well, you can barely tell half the time. Yeah, I think it was fine. Um, nothing to write home about, you know. I'd, I'd say it... So I heard this the other day, which okay. made a lot of sense. And it was talking about how the standard has changed. Like Demon Slayer season two has set the standard for animation in the world. And then Arcane has reinvented it and just all this. And I was like, in a world full of like just so much clean animation, I feel like a lot of, because this is still really good inform- animation. Like Cuphead is still really animated really well, in my personal opinion. So it's like when we have all this crazy stuff happening, like the really good just kind of isn't enough to like, you know, I feel I feel like they were like, OK, we can lax on the writing and stuff because we've got some trippy animation in some moments. But like, I think when they did that, they weren't accounting for like the arcane Demon Slayer season two, the like even Invincible, like because I, I know a lot of people like hate when Invincible is compared to like arcane and like other great like animated shows. But like it works like invincible works so well for what it does like it has that comic book feel like perfected in my opinion and like cuphead didn't really give me that video game animation like feel that kind of wanted like so at that instance i would say i kind of failed but everything else was like decent so just didn't give me that like crisp like this is a video game type feel that i wanted you know what i mean Honestly, no, I don't. <laughs> I there are so many different kinds of. Um... <sighs> okay, one of the biggest, um, like, I don't have a good word for it, but one of the biggest like gaps between how I see things and how I think most people see them is that uh, people will talk about the animation and talk about like the art style, like how the characters look, how the world is presented and everything. Those are two wildly different things in my brain. The art style is just like the picture that it looks like in the animation is all the different pictures coming together and how it flows. Um, like, uh, I think about the how a lot of people dropped off with Benton Omniverse because they changed the art style and they were constantly complaining about the animation. Not the same thing. <laughs> Not the sure. animation actually got a lot smoother and blended a lot better, but the style of the characters and the art direction is what changed. So it wasn't wasn't so much like the mana action style and yeah. it just slightly changed. It was like, what is that? Yeah, it pretty <laughs> much, like, yeah. So when I look at the animation for this, I see the 20s and 30s style that they're parody, parodying. Parody? Parodying? Parodying, it's, yeah. Um, oh, oh it's my, one of those words that, am I saying this right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, parody satire whatever you want to freaking call it they're basically using that as an aesthetic to make fun of everything but it just and that's fine they do a good job with it i'm not a big fan of the art style but that doesn't mean how it the animations presented isn't good i mean i don't mind the art style like i said the animation just felt like weird to me like I don't know. It's just like it didn't feel like because I know I know what I'm saying. Like, I know it may seem like I don't know what I'm saying, but like, I think that, (laughs) you know, I believe you know what you're saying. The problem is I don't understand what you're saying. So so let me. okay. so let me try from like the art style of we're just use Arcane, for example, the art style of Arcane was the art style of Lead the Legends. I feel like it did that really well. It had this uniqueness 
but the animation also kind of flowed with that. You know what I mean? Like the use of like fluidity and like colors popping and stuff like that. I felt like that all fit together. And the same thing with like Invincible with like the blood spatters on the train and all that. Like spoilers. Um, I feel like that all went together with the art style and the animation together. I feel like in Cuphead that the animation and the art style were kind of like jarring against each other a little bit. Not like, okay, not even like jarring, just like it didn't feel like it was animated like a video game, like the video game would be. If that makes sense, I can't really like. Well, so the video game it's i'm actually not sure of the fps but i believe it would be either 30 or 60 fps and i think yeah, they went with right. the, the traditional 24 frames per second maybe that's what it is like and, and the video game is also like 2d isn't it yeah and maybe not much like I, I mean i looked up a little bit of the game and um uh, just watch some like the gameplay and everything, and it more or less just looked like the freaking show. So that's why I think I'm, I feel like this could be like a Disney thing, and it doesn't. It feels kind of Disney to me. If that makes sense, I don't know. It's an homage to old Disney animation. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess like, but I feel like this could be current on Disney Channel. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Next thing, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Season returns this Saturday, man. Oh, hello, fucking Mm Louia. Yeah, 9 a.m. If you got Disney Channel or cable. Which I don't. It's okay. I don't either. It's okay. (laughs) But I'm ready for it to return. I will find a way. But it'll be on Disney+. What do you you guys think of the characters overall? They all sucked. (laughs) Honestly, this is where I say the writing kind of dropped the ball. Yeah. Uh, the situations and everything that was fine, but the only yeah. character I actually believed in and was actually just like, yeah, I can see someone acting like that. I can see this person being like that is the devil. Yes, yeah, pretty same. much. He, he same. is was probably the, the best character in the show. Honestly, same. <laughs> like, absolutely Cuphead. same. <laughs> I I don't know what the deal with Cuphead and Mugman was. Like they kept bouncing back and forth, but like they were five years old or like 20. I don't fucking know what their deal was. <laughs> yeah. It was like, when they if that was the journey. joke, then great. It's not one I found amusing. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel like they, at one point they felt like they were downtrodden, like men in their fifties. Like we gotta get out of here. We gotta do something different, man. And they're like, I don't know what I'm doing. I want to go home. I'm like, not right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, past, past the, devil doing devil things which was admittedly pretty fun yeah uh, the only other character i found at any point i gave a shit about was the was henchman? uh no um old kettle dude elder kettle that That's guy elder kettle <laughs> uh and i only cared because of one episode and you could tell the plot of the episode within the first five seconds <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he misunderstood what the kids were talking about. He misunderstood that, oh, our dear little pet is dying. We should go <laughs> put it out of its misery. It's too old. What? It's too I old. old. But he went full on Viet Cong and just put booby traps throughout uh, his that, whole house. That I'm was like, kind of okay, funny. <laughs> that's awesome. Can yeah, I get more sitcom that. plots like this? I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Um, but other than that, I was mostly just bored. Yeah, Miss Chalice just felt like, you know, there's a Minnie Mouse, so there's got to be a Miss Chalice. Well, that's fun what thing, felt like uh, in the game, I believe she was a ghost that, it, like, you go to these um, specific parts of Inkwell Isle in the game, little map area, and she gives you challenges, and of course you can power up your characters if you beat the challenges. Well, then people are like, well, why don't you add her as a character in the game? And like, all right, but she's a ghost. So I guess now we'll make her new. And that's kind of like a whole side plot in yeah. the show for some reason, but not until the last episode, which I feel like the biggest audience for this show is the fans of the game. Yeah. So in that respect, it gives them everything they would want anyway. Throw your cat out. So. <laughs> but yeah, no, I feel that. Um. So, yeah. That's like, I feel like this game was really made for the fans of Cuphead. Like, you know, 
Like, I feel like that's the difference between this and again. I know I'm bringing up Arcane. I know I'm bringing up Invincible. And it's it's up, okay to bring up, you compare um, stuff, you know. But like, Arcane was made for anybody. That was the thing that propelled Arcane. Like, you, like, it was a, excuse my language, it was an orgasm for League of Legends fans, but it was an enjoyable <laughs> experience for everybody overall. And like, that's, that's something that. That's the thing. I don't know if it was. Uh, because the animation studio that made it and everything were already fans. They got the job because of all their fan animation stuff and everything. Yeah, but so, like, well, it wasn't a fan animation. They actually worked on. They other made a bunch of trailer, like trailers, yeah, and like, everything. But they got that um, because of some other fan shit. Yeah, the first one they worked on ironically was Jinx. So I was like, ha, we know why she got so yeah. much care. But um. It felt like Arcane, well, it didn't feel like Arcane was something anybody could come into. Like, no one could, like, Arcane was ungatekeepable. You know, it's like, this is for everybody. You know, this is for, you know, people who just got into the story, who's looking for an entry point. Like, you know, even if, like, it wasn't just like, it's like, kind of like, I feel like, you know, same thing with Avatar Last Airbender. Like, anybody could watch that. I could recommend that to anybody. Same thing with Arcane. And same thing with Invincible. Like, you don't have to be a comic fan. Like, the majority of the people I know who watched Invincible have never picked up a comic book in their life. Losers. And that's what separates those shows from, like, Cuphead. Like, Cuphead, yeah, I I felt like this was for the Cuphead fans okay. instead of for, like, everybody, if that makes sense. Like, it okay. wasn't... I, th- I think I can see where you're going with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely, uh, like with a lot of those shows and everything, the opening was much more open. Yeah, It was much more like, hey, this is how things are starting, but it's going to change. Just stick with it for a little bit. With this, it drops you right in the middle of it. So for the majority of the time, having not played the games, I felt like I was missing something. Yeah, this felt like that He Man show we covered like a while back, like where, yeah, like they literally if, dropped you into like if you, you don't understand what He Man is, yeah. you ain't gonna get the show. Did you watch yeah. the whole entire episodic series? No, too bad. Here you go. It sucks to be you. <laughs> Everyone you watched dies. the OG Masters of the Universe. Well, you better like that type of like. Are you thirty years old or plus? I mean, 40, are you 40 years old and need late, to late, late oh God, it's 40 late, at this point? Late 20s. Yeah. We, we, we understood that because we watched the like 2005 the rebooted show. one that flopped. But yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> did there it were flop? A bunch of, I had it toys. Flopped. Did it flop? It flopped. Okay. It flopped. I still yeah. have the tiger somewhere. Somewhere in a crate. <laughs> Probably. Um, Tell me the tiger's name <laughs> without looking it up. Tiger. Bugo. No, Bugo? that's not Bugo. What is it? I can't remember. Battle Cat Blue? something. Battle Cat Cringer. Battle Cat. They Cringer. Even, there we go. They even said it Cringer, in yeah, the new that's show. Weird. Oh, yeah. Bugo was the ghost that looked like he was from freaking Magic the Gathering. Gotcha. Um, Ludo, anyway. <laughs> was no. his name? It was something, though. Sure. Oh, anyway. it, starts with, it starts with an O. Ogo. Ogo. Ugo. Ugo. Or- that's what it was. No. Orco. There you go. Orco. Same fucking thing. No, it's not. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, so who was your guys' favorite character from Cuphead? Mine was nobody. <laughs> the yeah, devil. it had to be the devil, though. I mean, I knew you guys were going to say the devil. So, okay, outside of, since we all agreed before this, outside of the devil, who was your favorite character? Exactly, hey. nobody. Moving on. <laughs> I mean, I was kidding. actually going to say, I'm surprised uh, if Kells were here, he'd probably say, you know what? The moon. Cuphead himself reminds me of a lot of strange. <laughs> <laughs> I can I don't know if I would agree with the person he would he'd be called out, but I think I, I don't, is I the don't. only one of us who has played the game, so Yeah. Really? Did he yeah. actually play this? Why? Yeah, he played this. He played Damn it, um, ain't here. Oh yeah. Yeah. anyways. <laughs> you know what? Life's life. Sometimes you just ain't there when you're the most I know, needed person. I know. Like I know you guys all wanted my reactions for Table Coon last week. I am sorry, but I was hoping for that. I feel like yeah. I lost nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like you, Zog. Um, when we do that season two of Shield Hero, and you're not here, remember why? We'll do it. Uh, we'll do an episode of season two for Shield Hero, and I'll just be watching season two of Shield Hero. 
What's a lie? But anyway, um, <laughs> August the, April 9th host. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I would say the devil is my favorite character. I really didn't have a like tertiary favorite character. I feel like maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. <laughs> You were trying to pick some. I feel like you're mentally throwing a dart at a dartboard and seeing who. I'm gonna go with King Dice as my second favorite character. (laughs) Okay. You were looking at the IMDb pages to see who. I was like, which actor do I like? (laughs) (laughs) Which is Wayne Brady. He's a good. Wayne Brady actually did a really good job as King Dice. I was actually very impressed with them. I was like, can we get more King Dice? No. Can we get more? No. Can we get more Wayne Brady? Fuck King Dice. I Sorry. Just, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it is just more Wayne Brady, please. But it's literally Wayne. Well, if King Dice had been voiced, voiced by, I want to say, possibly anybody else outside of like the weird charisma of Will Smith or like Morgan Freeman, because we all bow down to Morgan Freeman no matter what he's talking about. And like, yeah, but that voice doesn't fit with this character. <laughs> you telling me if Morgan Freeman wasn't King Dice, you wouldn't be hyped for it. I wouldn't be, no. I can't see. I'd be it, no. questioning why Morgan Freeman is in this trash. Well, exactly. I mean, I know whatever uh, happens. Hypothet- it, hypothetical. And that's but. not to say I think the show is trash. I'm that's just the immediate reaction I would have. <laughs> Listen, man. Okay, fine. Not Morgan Freeman. Let's give who's another prominent voice actor. Let's do Todd Habercorn. Voice not to from Fairy Tale. I can okay. see it, but uh, it he's not. I don't see the showman aspect of the character coming through as yeah. well as with Wayne Brady. Okay, like, the, only person, will be as good. the only person I can think to swap him out with would be like Neil Patrick Harris. Which I mean, I could see that as well, but at the same time, it's not happening. So either way, <laughs> Wayne Brady for the win. Like it doesn't matter. King Dice was not a good character. Wayne Brady carried. I'm gonna say that. So. <laughs> Wayne Brady is my second character behind the devil. So, yes. But I can see it. so like since we've, you know, we've given our criticisms and everything, is there any way you guys would improve upon the show at all? Like Yes, maybe- here's what I would do. I would take okay. it back to the drawing board and I would erase it. That's destructive criticism. We need more. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, Honestly, I think this show could have been better. If it had, if again, if it wasn't episodic, if there was an overarching like plot, maybe like acts, like three acts, you know, over the 15 episodes, each act is five episodes. Um, maybe like, would you think like more action type stuff, or maybe more? No, because that's not what Cuphead's really about. Like, I feel like more the writing would definitely have to be better. Like, I feel like the. Like, it felt like this was, like, again, the target audience, who are we aiming for here? Like, who is this for with the jokes and the writing? If you want to go for the adults, that's fine. Commit. If you want to go for, you know, the pop culture meta, then commit. It just didn't really commit to who it was going for. So if it committed to the where it was aiming, then at least it would have a shot with me. So right now it's just oh. you're shooting into the dark and the that's wind the, the opposite I way with your eyes did. closed. I think it did commit. It just committed to the audience that was already there for the games. And this is a different yeah. median. So, so, Zog, so would you change the the story or writing to not fit just the people who played the games? If like, haha, look, here's a fire breathing dragon because it was in the game. Isn't that funny? Or well, for one thing, broaden your aspects. Yes. Like <laughs> it's not just the people who were played the games watching this. Try and it, make it more open to people but uh honestly at this point the the only thing i can honest i don't know enough about cuphead to give a full answer to that so the only thing i can really say is put the devil in there more yeah so would it would it have worked better if the devil was maybe a more reoccurring villain instead of just the three episodes we got of him? Or? No, for twelve episodes, I think the three episodes were the, like the good, the right amount to have him. Mm-hmm. But I don't. 
it depends on what episode you do and with him and whatnot. He's the only one who has a continuous story, so it all depends on what's going on with him. And I think it's hard to say, you know, what what can make the show better when it wasn't really for us. Like mm-hmm. that's like asking me. Well, I mean, you know, I have a whole bucket list of what they could do to make Boruto better. Um, but like that's <laughs> like saying, what could they do to? It's hard because I don't care about it. I mean, honest with you, like, like, because I was gonna use Ruby as an example, and I was like, no, I even have some semblance, <laughs> semblance, um, of Ruby. Like, you I'm know, that, you could say what would make Centaur World better, but then you would be like, no. nothing, nothing. I mean, can ever no, make Centaur, Centaur World, World could be made better if yes, Centaur World could be okay. Actually, I haven't seen Centaur <laughs> World could be made Bible. better if they stayed in the original world instead of all that bullcrap. If they had focused on the character, so like the actual girl. out of Centaur World. Yes, if they stayed <laughs> out of Centaur... Yes. That would, <laughs> that might that as well just make, be the same thing as just saying, like, set on fire. That's how you make it better. <laughs> no, no, because seriously, if they stayed in the world of the girl whose name was Girl and maybe gave her a name, I don't know. Like, no, then, man needs a name. True, but, like, that would have been better. In this, I can't think of something that would make this better. Like, Cause I just I don't know it just was so far detached from me like enjoying it like not that it's horrible, but it was I wasn't invested in it honestly so I just for me not being invested in it I can't really tell you what would make it better because I didn't like care enough to put thought into that when I was watching. So I mean that's fair that's fair. What would you as someone who cared about this and chose this as a topic think could make it better? I think maybe if I like that the bosses of the game come back and that's kind of like, you know, their episode, their thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And thankfully these episodes are short, which Mm -hmm. again is more homage to older animation. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the plot, the air quote plot kind of takes a while to actually get started. And I know that Netflix and this is, um, we're kind of delving into um, the, this part, uh, Netflix ordered 24 episodes, but they did that thing where they split, they split it in to half. make it air quote two seasons, um, <sighs> which is a whole depressing thing of like, yeah, well, you didn't actually want two seasons. You're just splitting it up to. So <laughs> realistically, we only have half the season. We have half Pretty the much. O- half the opening presentation to go on. OK, that. Yeah. Yes. That makes a lot more sense in my brain. <laughs> It, it Netflix has been doing that a lot. They didn't really do that with Arcane. Funnily enough, I'm actually quite um, surprised they did. There's only nine that. episodes for Arcane, so Ar- yeah. yeah. Ar- so I, Arcane was like an it, hour it, each. So they did that. Like it's true. I mean, they did kind of do that because it was like did. a month. They released it in threes, and it was like a month between each one. So they technically mm-hmm. did do that. Yes. Yeah, but it wasn't but she, like. No. The wait wasn't like a whole year later or. Yeah. I mean, Comey is like what was is going to be because Comey came out in last fall and it's coming out in spring. I think part two, which is still season one. And then Eden Zero, Eden Zero, they kind of hold a little bit because Eden Zero came out all 24 episodes in Japan. And then we had a break, like a three month break in it between. So. Netflix just is going to keep doing this. At least it's not the seven deadly sin treatment where wrong season, like <laughs> wrong title, just so much, so much. We can't blame Netflix for the animation, but we can blame them for titling things the wrong season and just taking forever to air it. And just, At least they're not like Verve, which is like, here's seven seasons of a one season anime that's just in different languages. It's like, why do you people upload it like this? But, um, so I don't know. I feel like maybe if they if they kind of didn't have so many episodes, like 12 is fine and they're short, so it's not really like taking a lot of my time, but I felt like yeah. maybe the whole Miss Chalice thing could have happened a lot sooner or something. I don't know. Or not like, at all, yeah. Or like save that, it's like you go save from that episode for the second one, half premiere instead of leaving us on the cliffhanger of, hey, guess what? The boys are arrested. Yeah. Well, it's like episode one, here's the devil. Now there's like six episodes until we get to episode seven where he comes back. It's like, okay, that's, that's, it's a long, it's not long because it's short, short episodes, but it's just a I, lot. It, I, it's, it's okay. In my opinion, um, I'm probably not chomping at the bit to see season two, 
Uh, but yeah. um, it's it's harmless, honestly. Like, like at the end of the day, it's just kind of. Honestly, I'm just as comfortable watching season two as I am never having experienced any of this. So <laughs> it's it is what it is. It is like I said at the beginning. Meh. I think maybe now, when I if, went into this, I had a mantra which proved to be correct. It can't be worse than Sentai World, and it wasn't. So we're good. I th- I feel like for me though, maybe if the writing would have been a little wittier. For like the jokes and everything, that mm-hmm. easily that, would have uh, upped yeah. its game. That or the slapstick, but I felt again, like they didn't that's hard really, to do. <laughs> they didn't commit to the slapstick part, True. which so maybe if this was more of a comedy, it's more of less like a just. A, this felt, as far as comedy wise, this felt very sitcommy. Mm-hmm. Like very, but not mild. like regular show sitcommy. Like so, I didn't even like regular show so. <laughs> I do want to compare real quick stays the same for me. to another yeah. current sitcom animated show, Proud Owl Family. House. I was going to say that. I was going to say prouder. that. I was going to say Proud Family. Dead the ass. writing in Proud Family is it's so exquisite. funny. It's exquisite. Like, dead ass. It, like, I, I don't... Go ahead, Static. Go ahead. No, dude. sorry. You know, go ahead. That's your thing. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, it doesn't feel like... Sure, you do have the pop culture references, but it doesn't feel like all the jokes are like that in Louder But Prouder. But I don't Pr- think Cuphead could have put any pop culture references because that'd yeah. be really weird because it takes place in like 1930s and stuff. So I'm part of the uh, just- part of the advantage of Louder and Prouder is that originally the show just already did those kinds of things. Yeah, so like, just it was just back going into that from- and it's fine. Yeah. And Louder and Prouder also does, like, I'm just tooting on Louder and Prouder for a second. Like, it also does this <laughs> cool thing of, like, coming off with a message but not being preachy about it. Like, it's giving it to mm-hmm. you, but it's not, like, preaching it to you. So you automatically, yeah. like, gravitate towards it, which, which, you know. If modern television has taught me anything, that's hard. <laughs> yes, that is very hard. Because Steven Universe, don't get me wrong, like, a lot of people love Steven Universe, <laughs> but I felt like. Steven Universe episode. Okay. I mean, Open your page. Read passage <laughs> six. This is this episode. Just read it. Okay. Oh, Do you want me to improvise? Oh. No, read it. Just verbatim. Read I mean, it. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I, again, no offense to the Steven Universe lovers out there. That's just, oh, that's what it felt like. A lot. I mean, hell, personally, I like Girl Meets World, but it does that a lot too. So, Girl Meets World was so bad about that. Yeah. Like, it is one of the so, worst, like, you should treat others the way that you want to be treated. No, nah, it, it, it was yeah. like kind of worse than that. It was like, oh Don't my do God, bad. I'm thinking about the whole <laughs> Texas episode, Zog, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. why did we mess with that show so much back then, Lord? Just, anyway. It was, it was more it was Boy Meets, it was more it Boy was Meets World, and <laughs> Boy Meets World is still fire. <laughs> Yes, I I agree. And and Girl Meets World started off good. It just it took a nose dive. Anyway, I think Cuphead just for me Cuphead personally, I don't care for it to improve. Like there's so and Cuphead falls into a dangerous niche for me. There is so much good stuff. Even the there's okay, there's so much great stuff right now. Amazing stuff out right now. Like you can watch you can like Zog told me the other day on the phone, like this is like a binge worthy time right now. There's like I can go back if you haven't seen Shield Hero, there's twenty four episodes. And I would recommend watching Shield Hero for this. If you hadn't seen Invincible, I'd recommend that. I recommend Arcane, I recommend Demon Slayer, I recommend My Just Up Darling. I'd recommend so many things before this got to the list, you probably would not have time to watch this. And that's the problem with this. Like, there's no and I understand, you know, not everything can be it but like in a world full of it you know and it's not that this is like a rehashing of a video game because like i mean look at I'm trying to give another video game series like again i hate to bring it up but look at arcane like you know <laughs> league of legends has been around forever you want look uh, at it you want a video game series that does something almost completely different than the games but still manages to be a good fun time well persona Persona, yes, but uh, 
I was going to say the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. There you go. I was going to say that the, too, my guy. April 9th. <laughs> April 9th. Yeah. They, I, the second one might do a lot more of what the games did, but as far as I can tell, they're still sticking with um, stuff they established in the first one. And yeah, that was just a fun time that made you enjoy Sonic. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell you, man. Like, just so Cuphead, it feels, in my opinion, like if I had to, if I had to rate Cuphead, the animation, like the games, I would, they're not for me, but I would still give them like a B. Like I've heard a lot of good things. I play a little bit of it, and it was a fun experience, but it just wasn't for me. So I can respect that and give it a B. I I'd, I'd give this. Like a low C, maybe a D, just because, like, I mean, it also, this felt like a cash grab. It didn't feel like it was sincere. That's the other thing I wanted to say. It felt like this was not, like, for the fans. Like, it was for the community, but, like, as a cash grab. Like, Zog bringing up, like, the Sonic movies. The Sonic movies felt like it was an act of love. Like, they put, like, care behind it. So much as going to go change the animation when they saw the outcry of the fans. Like... So a lot of people said that was toxic because the fans have too much power. I'm like, no, that was like a studio actually caring about its fan base. I feel like the movie wouldn't exist without fans anyway. So thank you. So those people, you know, most people can get John Kitts, you know, uh, but I think a lot of fans of the Cuphead game were actually asking for a show. So I'm wondering if it was, it was kind of made out of peer pressure. I have been asking for the freaking Digimon Survive game for five <laughs> years, and no one has cared. Screw those people. <laughs> and now I'm asking picture. for Tamer's reboot. There's a new Still picture out. have not happened. There, yes, there's a picture, and there's a re-amped soundtrack for Tamer's. Are we going to get Tamer's? I don't know. We're going to have to do a separate podcast so I can rant about me not getting my Digimon that's been teased in front of me. So, anyway, I would say that... We have ranted about Cuphead. Um, my overall thoughts on the show is that it just it wasn't there for me. It was a miss. It's probably for somebody. If you enjoy Cuphead or think you might be interested, by all means, watch it. But it wasn't for me. Um, I could care less about the season two coming out in the summer. <laughs> if it is, even is a season two. Yes. It's technically season one, but it's part two of season one. I kind of feel the same way. It was it was all right. I I had one out 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 loud laugh, but that was only the devil when he was when he was pitching a fit in the forest or whatever after he couldn't uh, take Cuphead's soul because he had the sweater on. Yeah, he was just like ah, he started shape shifting everything. I, that that actually made that me was laugh the- a lot, but dumbest thing and <laughs> it's the only time i was actually just like you know what i'm enjoying myself right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> invisible Out- sweater <laughs> outside of seeing an old man go completely senile and lose his damn mind <sighs> i agree i agree those are probably the two best three three best episodes because seven and eight kind of like right next to each other um like Story wise, then episode 11. Yeah, it was like the second to last episode. Uh, Zog, overall thoughts? It ain't for me, man. It ain't (laughs) for me. (laughs) If you enjoy it, good for you. Good for you. Don't talk to me about it (laughs) because I got nothing for you. All right. Static. I already said it, man. No, I meant like... Take us away. Take Close us, us away. out. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, thank you for joining us through the slog of the <laughs> Cuphead. Um, if you would like to join us for more slogs, feel free to check out this on all your podcatchers. We're talking Spotify. We're talking Apple Music. We're talking Amazon Music. We're talking YouTube Music. Maybe, I don't know, but we're also on the regular YouTube. And you can find us at Content Breaker. All one word at content breaker and you can find me at static dreads on twitter for twitter stuff and see if i become a one piece stand account and what about you kels zog strange uh, strange. <laughs> kels zog, strange the amalgamation me, of us all here find me on twitter at strangely int and then i'm also on youtube strangely entertaining 
as well as Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash strangely entertaining, where I stream 7 p.m. Central Time, Tuesdays or Thursdays, depending on my schedule. Yes. Um, and Zog, what are we doing next week? Well, we like swords. We like games. Let's talk about Sword Art Online. Wow. Especially that new, especially we that new that. movie. The Hell. one about Asuna. Man, yeah. I gotta catch up. Dang Hell God. yeah. Hey, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. And check out the other product on YTSP because I know Kellis is gonna get mad. I didn't say it, so yes. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>